Before I introduce the mayor, I want to say a couple things. Jerry Wood came into office over 18 years ago. He came, he realized what needed to be done. He's worked extremely hard for the business community. He continues to develop and cultivate that business community and build good relationships throughout the city. He's a strong supporter of our business and our organization from the CVB to Roswell Inc. With that, I'd like to introduce Mayor Jerry Wood. A lot of decisions have been made uh, in my term of office, uh, and one of the best decisions my council ever made was to create uh, Roswell, Inc. Uh, so uh, thank you, council, and thank you, Steve Stroud, uh, and thank you, everybody who works with Roswell, Inc., because you have changed the whole culture of the city of Roswell. So let's have a hand for Roswell, Inc. Steve has uh, jumped, on me, jumped ahead of me and introduced just about everybody uh, that was elected here, but there's a, there's a team that, that I and my council rely heavily upon, and that's our staff. And they are represented here today by the department heads. And as I call their name, I'd like them to stand up. We have Kay Love, who is the city administrator. She runs the city. Chief Rusty Grant keeps it safe, our, fire, our police chief. <laughs> chief uh, Ricky Burnett, his people are there when there's an emergency. They were on the spot. <laughs> Alice Wakefield creates the plan for our community. Alice. <laughs> Dan Skowski is brand new to the city of Roswell. He's in charge of our environment. He keeps us a great place to live. Keith Lee makes sure the council doesn't spend too much money. Thank you, Keith. Uh, Michael Fisher does everything. He's our deputy city administrator. Thank you, Michael. Morgan Rogers has the most fun over at Reckon Parks. Uh, we've got a great program. He's brand new, not to the city, but to the department. And there's Steve Asenbrack, who keeps the wheels on the car and keeps it rolling. We've got a lot of projects with Steve. Well, I want to report to you that Roswell has never been in a better condition financially, culturally, socially, community-wise than right now. This is, uh, we're as solid as a rock. Now, I'm going to have got some flip charts. I'm going to talk about numbers, so to try to, to make it easier, I've got some charts up on the screen, and maybe that'll, I'm not a numbers guy, but I do like graphs, and I like pictures, so uh, I'm going to share some pictures with you. Let's have the, you know, who's, who's, who's in charge of my... You got, you got the clicker. Let's get the first, first one up. This is Georgia's unemployment rate. Uh, you can see that we're coming out of the recession at 7.4%. Next slide. Just when I, I'll give you the sign here. Next slide. Oh, there it is. This is North Fulton. Uh, and I am very proud of the region. When, when uh, Mercedes Benz comes to Sandy Springs, it helps all of us. Uh, when, when they were looking to locate, they were brought to Roswell, to Canton Street, the first place to see what a great place this is to live. So we all benefit by working together. Uh, and this is what I'm most proud of. This is Roswell's unemployment rate. Uh, we're at 4.8%, the lowest in the state, uh, four points lower than, than all of North Fulton County. So I am very proud of that. Uh, next slide. Sales tax revenue. This is another indicator of what the city's doing. Uh, you can see that uh, 2010 was the worst year. We're now at uh, 21 million 500, no, yeah, $500,000. We're above where we were when, before this recession began. So we're back uh, running all, all, all six or 12 cylinders. Uh, next slide. Uh, medium sales price of uh, another indicator. You can see that uh, the, the Median sales price is now up to $285,000. Uh, it's been, it's much higher than it was before this recession began. Another interesting thing, the little black line shows you the volume. What that tells us is, is that the demand is exceeding the supply. Uh, so uh, 
it shows you what opportunity there is for the city of Roswell. Next slide. Uh, just want you to let you know how the city's doing. This is our general fund revenue. We're before the recession, we were at 58 million. It was 62 million this year. We're up to 63 million dollars. Next slide. Uh, property tax digest. This is an interesting figure. Uh, I showed the median property values going up. Uh, but this is a lagging indicator. Our property digest is at $4.4 billion. We were at uh, $4.86 billion in 2010. What this is really telling you is that the Fulton County appraisal does not keep up with property values. But uh, the good news is, is our revenue is going to be going up and your property values are going up. Uh, and the good news is Liz Hausman is going to lower the Fulton County millage rate so that your property taxes don't go up when those uh, appraisals go up. <laughs> or at least she's going to try to. Next slide. Uh, this is just an overview of our general fund operating expenditures. Uh, as the recession has come up, we're, we're, we're doing our expenditures going up, but we're still below uh, revenues. Next slide. Uh, this is the revenue and operating expenditures. You can see the, the uh, orange lines are, ex are the uh, revenues and the green is the expenditures. So you can say we've got a fiscally conservative council, uh, which not only gives us, uh, but with our strong tax base, we can uh, uh, offer a high level of services, but there's a little money left over for capital expenditures. This is just the operating expenditures. Uh, so this is, what is this? Next slide. I wanted to talk about capital investments. Uh, but, but let me back up a second. I've left my, my I, got, I got so excited about my flip charts, I skipped over some things in the notes. Uh, 2014 building permits are double what they were last year. Uh, with the help of Roswell Inc. and the Chamber and all of you, we've got 595 new businesses and 1,397,000 jobs, 97, 97 jobs. And I want to again thank uh, the City Council who has uh, led this movement. I want to thank Roswell Inc. and the Chamber that have done, made this possible. And most especially, I want to invite everyone in this room because everyone here has had a part in improving Roswell's economy and, and bringing investments to the city and helping the city grow. Uh, let's see what my next slide is. Actually, oh, go, let's go back. Capital I want to give you a longer term view of what the city is investing because an investment is a big part of why Roswell is a great place to live, what the, the money that the city is putting in to make this a better place to live. Uh, one of the things I'm proud of is even during the recession, we were making a major investment in the city. You can see during the recession years of 2009 up to 2013, we were spending about $9 million a year on capital investments. Uh, the good news is that was the, that was the year to get the best deals on investments. We did that by spending down reserves and by floating a bond issue. But there have been a lot of projects which have made this city a, a great city and have set the, the pace for things. But this year is a, is set, sets a record. In 2015, we're projecting $20 million worth of capital expenditures with the city. Let me get the big picture here. I'll cover that in a minute. I want to talk first before I cover, continue to cover the city investments. Uh, this year, uh, getting ahead of my, my capital investments, we've got, uh, all right, let me cover the, the pie chart here. Go to the next, next one. This is, this is telling you how we spent this money in the past. This is a chart of 2009 through 2014. 26 million in transportation is, is the biggest investment. There's an issue down at the legislature. Do cities actually spend their tax money on transportation? This is how much we spent it over that time period on capital investments. Uh, and that's, next slide. This is how we're spending it this year, the $20 million I just in, mentioned. We've got $11.7 million in a new water plant. That's telling you that we're going to stay in the water business. Uh, we're not going to be dependent upon the Atlanta Fulton County Water Authority for supplying water, and we're going to be permanently in that business, a key, a key element to success. Uh, 
The last thing I want to cover here, let's, let's see the next slide. Just to let you know that I talked about the spending side. This is the, the let you know that we haven't gone into debt to do that. This is a, the current status of the city of Roswell. Current outstanding debt is $22 million. Money in the bank, earning interest is $90 million, $89.8 million. That's why we have a AAA bond rating. And I want you to know there is not a city in the nation with a better financial position than the city of Roswell. The last thing I want to talk about, talking about where we are today, is mention some of the awards we received this year. Uh, we received the uh, a Gold of, uh, Environmental Community Award by the Atlanta Regional Commission for Leadership and Sustainable Use of Resources. Our Water Department was awarded the 2014 Distribution System of the Year by the, water, the Georgia Water Authority. For the fourth year, we are a gold medal finalist in the, uh, for the best Parks and Recreation Department in the nation. Uh, Morgan, we expect to do better this year. Uh, and the, the last thing I want to mention is the Roswell Roots Festival was named the best cultural event by the Southeastern Festival and Events Association for 2014. Uh, that's, the, we're, we're, that's February. So there are a lot of events coming up for Roswell Roots. Uh, the two that I encourage you to go to, they're my favorite. We've got the Poetry Slam on February 19th at the Historic Cottage. I will be there. If you, if you don't know what a poetry slam is, it's not like poetry as I studied in, in high school. Uh, it's uh, very cutting edge, uh, entertaining, uh, but I highly encourage you to go to the poetry slam. I don't believe there's a fee for it, uh, but it's a very, it's just a, it's a great cultural experience. And then the other great event for the, for the Roswell Roots Festival, which I love, is the Unity Concert, February 28th at Zion Baptist Church. Uh, we've got, I call it the Battle of the uh, Choirs. Uh, but, the, uh, and, but I will tell you, the uh, African American churches always win. Uh, but it's great music. Uh, let's see what my next slide is. Revenue and expense projections. Uh, this is telling you in 2015, we're expecting revenues of 63 million. And if we continue on the current course, our expenditures will be about, we have 63 million revenues, $56 million of expenditures sort of maintaining our current level. So we've got some room for additional programs uh, and, e and room for additional capital expenditures. Uh, the best news is there's no room for a property tax increase. So we're not gonna see any property tax. I have to tell you this story. Every year, Kay Love tells me, oh, you're going to have to raise property taxes next year because she's, she's the pessimist on board. She's the, the real true fiscal conservative. And every year, I have the pleasure of telling her we didn't have to raise property taxes this year. And I hope that continues. So, so and, at looking at the operating budget, a couple of things that, that are top of my list is, one, I want to add some more policemen. Uh, we've got a great police department, uh, and we're well served. But uh, because of turnover, uh, and we're never fully staffed, so we want to add some more policemen to have a more robust uh, uh, public safety department. And uh, Rochelle's going to appreciate this. I'm going to put money this year in the budget for an arts festival. Now, she'll tell you that's not enough. You haven't gone near far enough, but that's the beginning. Uh, so I hope to have an arts festival this year. Let's see the next slide. Just so let you know, looking ahead, this is a long-term revenue and expense projections. The black line at the top. K is that we're not raising taxes. We don't have to raise taxes through 2020. And the, the rest of them looking at normal uh, uh, inflation, you can see that the orange is always exceeding the yellow, so our revenue is projected out with normal expected expenditure increases. We're good through 2020. Uh, and I think we'll stay good after that, Kay, regardless of your pessimism. <laughs> and the bottom lines just show the, uh, what our capital reserve is going to be, that we're, we're going to still maintain. We've, we've, we've got $13 million in, in, in reserve by policy, and we'll not only maintain that, we'll, we'll add to that. Which brings me to capital projects this year. We talked about uh, the $20 million we're going to be spending, but in addition to that, uh, the Fulton County School Board is spending $31 million on a new school, which is under construction right now. We've got $6.6 .6 million for the 
A uh, new library in East Roswell. Uh, the, the Roswell Housing Authority has a $16 million project behind City Hall. And then there's the $20 million in city properties up. Let me break that down for you. We've got $9 million for transportation improvements at Georgia 400 and Holcomb Bridge Road. Uh, that's moving ahead. Uh, we had a little glitch with the Department of Transportation, but uh, Senator Albers and Senator Geisinger helped smooth that over. And with the, uh, and, and I think we're back on track. Uh, Steve's meeting with our uh, chief engineer for DOT to get, get our projects back on track. So within the next, I'm not going to tell you traffic's going to go away at, the, at Holcomb Bridge in nine, but it's going to be much better. Uh, we've got $2 million on Eves Road. We're finishing up that project. That's not so much a transportation project. It is as a recreation project. It's, it's improving the road, but it's trails down to the river. We've got a million dollars for the roundabout at the intersection of House and Hembury Road. It's going to be built this year. The biggest public works project we've got this year, the biggest capital project, is the $15 million for the new water plant, which is going to tell you we're going to be in the water business from now on. And we're looking to talk with Fulton County about drilling some more wells to adding to the water supply. We've, we're going to go begin construction on a $3.8 million new fire station on Old Alabama Road to replace the old fire station number four. Rochelle, that's going to include a pilot project for public art uh, to see how that works. If that, if that works out, we'll try to see about expanding that to the, the uh, private sector too. Uh, we're finishing up a, we're gonna be uh, cutting the ribbon or turning the switch on a $5.2 million project for radio towers. Rec and parks were under construction for a $3.6 million senior therapeutic pool. For some of us in that room, it's going to be a benefit. For the rest of you, you just have to get older. Uh, we've got $3.8 million to extend the Roswell River Trail to the Chattahoochee Nature Center. Uh, that's been a long, arduous process. I, I don't, I've forgotten how many years that's been, but uh, we've got a new team, uh, and uh, we've got a new relationship with the National Park and the Chattahoochee Nature Center, and that project's going to be great. Uh, my, it's a small project, but my favorite little project and, and Jerry Orland's favorite project is $220,000 to renovate the old machine shop. It was the only mill building that wasn't burned by Sherman down on the river. Uh, and we're going to turn that into a special events facility. And it's a, it's a, my favorite spot in Roswell is Big Creek uh, at the old mill ruins. And uh, this is right next to where the covered bridge is and it's going to be an extraordinary spot and I hope we're going to have some special events down there. Uh, so there we are. We are a city with great schools. Uh, we've got strong churches. We've got prosperous, bridges, uh, uh, prosperous businesses. We've got good jobs up here. We've got a low crime rate. We've got great parks. We've got Canton Street, the historic district, and the Chattahoochee River, all of which are the envy of all our surrounding cities. And I believe we're the cultural and nonprofit capital of North Fulton County. So the question is, where do we go from here? Uh, because uh, we know that Atlanta's population is going to continue to grow. And if current trends hold, that growth is coming our way. But there is no assurance that that growth is going to make Roswell a better place to live. It is our job to make sure that it, it becomes a better place to live. It's the council's job and Roswell Inc.'s job and the DDA's job and design review board's job and everyone's job in this room to see that as this town grows, it becomes a better place to live. We have done a great job during my lifetime of doing that and I am confident we can. But it takes a lot of work, it takes a lot of planning and it takes an investment. So going through that SWOT analysis, which I don't know really what it means, but most of y'all business people do because they study that in business. Uh, I think the biggest threat that we are facing today is complacency because success does build complacency and complacency breeds failure. Uh, but on the other hand, success can create momentum and that momentum can build success. Uh, the, the changes we're going to be seeing uh, are going to create anxiety and opposition. 
but it's going to create opportunity. Uh, again, as more and more people come to Roswell, uh, it's our, going to be our responsibility to uh, provide the services for them and, and create the plans for them and, and be the leaders to make sure that this becomes a better community. So that is the second question, is how do we manage that growth? How do we plan for that growth? Well, I, it's sort of, I got three words here. We need to plan for it, we need to adapt our, where we are for it, and we need to make investments. And on the planning side, some of the plans that we're working on right now, we've got the uh, A Sand Company property, Don White too. We're, we're, we're making plans for that park right now, and if you've got any ideas what you'd like to see down at Don White Park, we're gonna be uh, entertaining public comment. We've got the Village Green, which we just approved $360,000 to create the concept pl for plan for that. That is the green space, the small green space between City Hall and Canton Street. We want to open up City Hall to Canton Street, uh, connect to Canton Street, connect Canton Street uh, south to the square, and this is a, a key part of it. So this is the first step, is to come up with that plan. Uh, and the biggest planning, and we're spending millions of dollars on that, is in the transportation department. We've got uh, a big budget and lots of ideas, and we're looking, Brandon and Senator Albers and uh, Representative Geisinger, for help from the state. I know you all are struggling with funding down there. I'm sure you'll come up with a good solution and find that billion and a half dollars plus, uh, and we'll move ahead. Uh, so, and the last thing I said, I talked about, we need to plan, we need to, we need to adapt our regulations. We're looking at revising the UDC. We need to change the way we're doing things to make sure that we uh, are, are welcoming to business as it comes in and giving them leadership to see that they build what we want. Uh, but most importantly, we're going to need to continue to invest in this city. I've talked about our past investment, but that's the down payment. We need to continue that. Uh, we need to invest in our transportation improvements. Uh, we need to invest in our utilities and our parks and our infrastructure. Because investing uh, improves our quality of life. It attracts businesses and jobs and people, generates tax revenue, and, it, and ultimately the investment pays for itself. So I want to talk about some of the future capital projects that the council and I are going to look at. I'm just going to mention my favorites. The council can come back with their favorites. Uh, but. Uh, it's all of our favorites for the Sun Valley Connector. I think that's at the top of the list for this council. Uh, that's connecting, that'll be a connection between Mansell Road and Highway 9 uh, next to where Target is through where I used to uh, swim when I was a boy, the old Sun Valley Lake, which is kind of a detention pond now, but it'll, it, it has a new life. Sun Valley Connector, uh, one that we, was on the, we looked at for a while and, and, and have moved on, but I need to re think we need to revise it, and that's the Mansell Road Extension. Uh, Ossie is here. We, we want to talk with Ossie about uh, working a deal with Ossie to bring Mansell Road right by where his business is and tie it into Highway 9. We've already got uh, some of the right-of-way on, on uh, 92 to make that start, but that's a project which I'm a big supporter of, and I think will encourage redevelopment in that area and route some traffic around that Holcomb Bridge uh, Highway 9 intersection. Uh, the South Atlanta Street project, uh, we're in right away, well, we're, we're doing, Steve's giving me signals back here, we're finishing up the environmental studies, which includes bat studies, includes marine archeological studies. Uh, uh, our congressman needs to help us with that sometimes. We've got way too much government regulation. I think government regulation, federal regulation, when you do a federal project, probably adds three years to the project just to get past all those regulations. But we're going to be working through all of that to, uh, to make the improvements to South Atlanta Street, and I don't want to go into the details, but uh, uh, let's just say 20 years ago, I was the biggest opponent of widening uh, Highway 9, uh, I, mean, I, mean, I mean, 9 south of the square. And now I'm the biggest proponent because it has totally changed. It's a, it's a totally different project when they began and it's one that's going to improve all of the city of Roswell. Big Creek Parkway connection to North Point and West Side Parkway in Alpharetta. That's our biggest project. That's probably about a $50 million project. We've, we've spent about $2 million to do the concept plans. We're looking at the environment, but for the folks who are not familiar with that, 
north of Hokum Bridge, we've only got two ways to get from East Roswell to, to West Roswell, and, and one's a, the Riverside Road, which we don't want to make a high traffic area. That really needs to be a parkway. And the other one is Hokum Bridge. And Hokum Bridge, there's not a lot of way to add capacity to that. So the idea is to create another bridge across 400 north of it and not only create that bridge to connect Roswell, but extend Westside Parkway and North Point Parkway down to the city of Roswell to take some traffic off, off of 400. But again, it's a long-term project. Another reason, uh, representatives, that we need, that, we, that Roswell supports raising taxes. I have, I, there's no other way to put it. Raising taxes to pay for these transportation projects, which is essential for any growth in business. I'm not asking for applause, I, but, 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 but they appreciate it, and I appreciate it. Uh, and then there are a lot of small projects. There are roundabouts and pedestrian connections and vehicle connections, all ways to make transportation work better in the city of Roswell. Those are our transportation projects. Public safety, there's a need for another fire station uh, west on Highway 92, out uh, where, near where Lita Thompson Park is, out in my neighborhood. It's underserved, and we've got the longest response times there. Uh, City Hall Green, we talked about earlier, is a potentially a $5 million pro project, which we think will be transformational for that side of town. Uh, we've got uh, extension of the Riverwalk. This project, we talked about taking it to the Chattahoochee Nature Center. We want to take it all the way to Cobb County and tie into all the improvements on Lower Roswell Road, which would include a new bridge over Willio, and we already have a, a, a memorandum of understanding with Cobb County to uh, make that a joint project, but we don't have it funded yet. Uh, Canton Street parking. Every, everyone who's been to Canton Street on a Friday or Saturday night, uh, if you can get in the restaurant, you, it's still hard to find parking, and we recognize that parking is a big issue there, and we're looking for solutions to that, but it's going to cost us uh, money on the, an investment on the front end. Uh, and if we, if we can get some parking, we can expand that district and even have a bigger success. So the, the question I want to leave with you all is how do we pay for all those investments? I, I haven't added the numbers up, but, but I think if we look at our capital improvement project list, it's about a $50 million list. And even if we, uh, once the council and I can agree upon what stays on that list, it's still going to be a large need for investment to make sure that Roswell continues to be a great place to live as we grow. So I think I got another slide. What's my next slide? We've got two options. You got pay as you go. If I'm looking at uh, 2016 to 2020, if I pay as I go, which means I don't borrow any money, we just pay for it as the revenue comes in, we can come up with about $15 million for capital improvements. If we do a bond issue, it can be $32 million. When I say a bond issue, we can borrow up to $24 million and then some every year to, without raising any taxes, we can come up with $32 million. So the question where we're going to be coming back to you and the city of Roswell uh, this year or next, depending on when, it's, when we're ready to have the list, is do we want to do a bond issue to pay for this investment in the future? Uh, I believe as any businessman does, that in, an investment makes sense when the return is greater than the cost. Well, let's talk about the return first. Do you want the traffic improvement now? Do you want to see a solution for traffic now, or do you want to wait five years? You know, that one, you can see the benefit of the return on investing in transportation, and I, and I will tell you you've got the same return on public safety and recreation and utilities. On the other side, we can borrow money right now at 3% per annum. As a, as, as a, and so at a, at a nominal cost, we can borrow this money. So I'm going to be coming back to you all to talk about a investing to make so we make sure Roswell becomes an even better place to live. So those are my questions. And here's my advice, just generally, general advice. It's whether you're young and just getting a job, or you're starting a family, or you're enjoying a successful career, or you're growing your business, or you're planning for retirement, Roswell is the place to live. I'm glad I grew up here. I'm glad you joined me here. And thank you for allowing me to be your mayor.
At your table, you have a comment card. If you want to fill it out with a, a question, our Rosalink staff will come around real quick and, and grab those questions. A couple things the mayor hit on. Uh, and one of the things he did not mention was MARTA. Uh, I will tell you that from our business community, MARTA is a very important part of what we need to be and what we no need to be for the future. The mayor has stepped up to the plate, took a team down in the month of December. We met with Keith Parker, the head of uh, MARTA. We need MARTA on the east side of 400, on Holcomb Bridge Road. We need MARTA not only on, on Holcomb Bridge Road, but on Mansell Road. We need more lines, and that was asked for. We also asked for the, the location and where we can help to locate heavy rail within the city. And I'm not taking the mayor's thunder, but that is a charge that we need to be all about. Because for us to grow in Roswell, we know the new millenniums and the older generation, a little sparkle, would like to ride to the stadium downtown, to the airport, and not get on 400 and go to work. And folks, if we started today, it'd be 25 years. We know that because the funding's not there, but we'll find funding. We'll do a pub public-private. We'll make it work. And I think that's what's key to bringing the right kind of jobs to Roswell, to Alpharetta. Our mayor stood up and said, we want it. We need to be, be able to bring to those 196 restaurants the right kind of employees to get those folks a place to live in Roswell and a place to, to be able to transport back and forth. So that's a key element. I also want to give credit to our mayor and our council because two weeks ago they approved 125 rooms for a boutique hotel in the city in the downtown historic district. Do we have that located? It's coming. Can't tell you where, can't tell you when. But we now have in our UDC the availability to do that and that leadership stepped up and took care of that issue. So that's a big piece for us because if we're going to grow our tourism portion, our historic portion and our business portion, there's a desperate need for new hotels and new hotel rooms in the city of Roswell. It funds a lot of things. A hotel does not pay property. It pays property tax, excuse me, Kay would, would swap and, me. Sales and sales tax and excise tax on liquor. It's the best kind of, and then the hotel motel tax, it's the best kind of business we could have. So we need to cultivate that business. And I know the people at Choke would love to build a hotel, would love to do that, right? Uh, questions, do you have, anybody have any questions? Before you, before oh, we yeah. call oh, questions, yeah. let me get me, Steve has, can, can't keep right and left straight or east and south straight. So what he really meant to say is we want to see Marta north of the river. Yes. As far as which side it's going on, we're not sure whether it's going to be east or west. Sandy Springs, it wants it on the west side as it comes through Sandy Springs. So it, there's an indication that it's going to be on the west side when it reaches Roswell, but that decision hasn't been made. Uh, and it wasn't me that took the lead on MARTA, it was my city council mm -hmm. uh, who passed a resolution last year to support MARTA coming up here because they recognized the importance of it. Uh, and just to confirm that, uh, I think one of the reasons that uh, Mercedes-Benz located where they did is because of uh, MARTA. And uh, if you were going to attract that quality and that caliber of business, I think you're going to have to have or at least uh, the promise of uh, transit in the future. Anybody have any questions? I know that Roswell's a happy place to live when I don't have any criticism from the floor. So uh, 
uh, I'll let y'all go back to work, and thank you for coming. Thank you.